Well, hello again. Um, today I want to explain uh, set as best I can. Um, this is set equivalence theory. I'm not going to be solving a puzzle on this video, just explaining um, a technique for solving Sudokus. Um, and that way in the future when I need to use it in a puzzle, I don't have to explain it. I can kind of reference this video for people who don't know set. So uh, at very basic level, set equivalence theory is just saying we're taking two sets generally i mean you could probably do more than two but generally two sets of cells for example box one could be a set and box three could be another set we have two different sets of cells and we're saying that those sets are equivalent and so obviously in this situation box one is equivalent to box three because we know that every box has the digits one two three four five six seven eight nine they have the same number of digits the same exact digits the total is the same of course obviously right so <clears throat> that's all we're really doing now it just you just kind of doing it in a fancy way so most basic is saying these two boxes are the same obviously now we can do the same thing we can say a column let's mark it yellow is the same as a row for example right let's make it blue now where they cross i'm going to make that green so we know that this column is going to have the digits one through nine this row is going to have the digits one through nine obviously now this green whatever it is is going to be in both sets let's call it a one right let's say it's a one doesn't really matter whatever it is we're going to say it's a one the rest of the blue set has to equal the rest of the yellow set. So we can remove the one from the set and the blues are now going to be two through nine and the yellows are going to be two through nine. So the blue set equals the yellow set again, very obvious, right? But, uh, when you get into a little bit more complex sets, this can be really useful. So, let's do another let's just do kind of the next level up from a row and a column let's keep this row as blue and we're gonna make box seven here be yellow okay that's gonna be our other set because we know that a row has one through nine and a box has one through nine so we're gonna have three overlapping cells here so now again these three cells are in both the yellow and the blue sets if we remove them we know these six blue cells have to equal the six yellow cells. And again, that that holds true, obviously. Whatever is in, you know, if this is a one in the blue, well, where's that gonna go in box seven? It has to be in the yellow. If this is a two, where's that gonna go in box seven? Again, it has to be in the yellow. Every cell in the blue here is gonna have to be in the yellow in box seven. So those are equal, okay? Now, we can go on to more complex sets. Um, we can do things like, um, we can have more than, you know, your sets can be more than one uh, copy of the digits one through nine. So we could do, for example, these two rows, right? And let's make those yellow. And then we could do maybe these two row, these two columns, sorry in blue right and so we've got these as overlap and so we've got two copies of one through nine in the yellow set here and two copies of one through nine in the blue set so whatever we remove from the gr green here that was in both sets we now know that all of these yellow digits are going to equal all of the blue digits and we're starting to get where it's a little less obvious you know if i just showed you this and said are these equal you'd kind of go maybe or at least i would um it's not quite as obvious as when you just have kind of a row and a column so but it's the same exact logic the yellow here has to equal the blues um, and that works out for the digits in the yellow equal the digits in the blues as well as of course then the sum the total of those are equal as well um, and, and that's really where it comes in handy a lot of times. Now you can apply this to like a classic Sudoku. Um, it can usually help with that some, but uh, where it comes up a lot is like in an arrow Sudoku or something. Cause what'll happen is you'll have an arrow here, uh, maybe doing something like this and you'll have one here doing something like this, right? And so now, <clears throat> since we know that the blue total equals the yellow total, and we know that these three digits on the arrow have to equal that blue circle, 
since those are the same total, we can remove them. And we've removed the same amount uh, of total from the blue and the yellow. So the blue and the yellow are still equal in sum, if not equal in digits anymore. And we can do the same thing with this arrow. And so now you can see we have eight yellow cells here that have to be the same total as 12 blue cells. And so you can start to limit here and you can say, well, the yellows ha can't be too small and the blues can't be too big. And then, you know, let's say you had another arrow right here. This is probably not even a valid grid, but you could remove those. And now you can start to see that, wow, we really are limiting things. And if you had another one over here, now you would have six and six. These yellows and blues would have to be the same sum, even if they're not the same digits anymore. So that's where it can be really useful. Now, a couple of common, commonly used examples of set, um, there's the Fistimafel ring, which is a really popular one. Um, and essentially what that is, is if you take boxes one, three, seven, and nine, we'll make those our yellow set. So that is four copies of the digits one through nine. Now we're going to, our other set is also going to be four copies of the digits one through nine, but with a little bit of a twist. So we're going to take row three and seven and column three and seven. Now we're going to make those be our blue. So we have our overlap here. Now I'm not going to highlight those other four cells just yet and for a reason. Now, so our overlap is in here, but these four are kind of special. I'm going to make them gold because these are in the yellow set um, because they're in the box, but they're also in the blue set twice because they're in the column and the row. So I'm making them a different color because they're kind of in both, but it all works out because what we're going to do is these greens, since they're in yellow and blue, we can just remove those because they're in both sets. So we delete all of those. And now these gold ones are in the yellow and the blue and the blue again, right? Because they're in a row and a column. So if we remove them from the yellow and once from the blue, just like we're doing with the greens, they're in the yellow and in the blue twice, we remove them from the yellow and one of the blue sets, they are still in the blue set, but no longer double counted. And we end up with the classic Fistimafel ring here. Now you can do this same thing with all kinds of different patterns. Um, you can end up with, um, let's see, one that I've used before that's essentially just the Fistimafel ring, but with things shifted around a little bit. Um, looks like this. This is the same thing, um, but just kind of with things flip-flopped around. So you can do all kinds of different combinations of stuff, but that's another popular one. Um, now another one that's kind of cool, that's, um, and by the way, the Fistimafel ring is named after Fistimafel because he used it in a puzzle and it became popular, um, not because Fistimafel necessarily invented it. Uh, like, like naming things often happens, you know, it's not necessarily the person that invents it that gets named after. And I think this one's similar to, this is sometimes called odds theorem. Um, but I don't think odd invented it originally, but, um, kind of pointed out and made it popular. So this one is, let's see, we're going to take the first five rows and make those the yellow set. Okay. So we have five copies of one through nine in our yellow set for our blue set. We're going to use, um, columns one through four. Now this is only four copies. You may notice it's four copies and five copies. Our overlap is going to be all of those. So there's five copies of one through nine in the yellow. There's four copies of one through nine in the blue. So what we can say is the yellow equals the blue plus one copy of one through nine. So we can remove all the greens and we can still say that the yellow equals the blue plus one more copy of one through nine because we've removed the same digits from both sets. So if the yellow is the blue plus one copy of one through nine, 
what happens if we remove box three? That is one copy of the digits one through nine. So the yellow now equals the blue. Um, and this is one that's not, again, it's not super obvious that the yellow would have to equal the blue, but in every single Sudoku, pull out any Sudoku, it doesn't matter if it's a variant, a classic, um, as long as it's normal Sudoku rules, as long as it's not like, you know, the Bizarro Sudoku or something weird like that. Um, no repeating digits, those kind of things. But a normal, you know, Sudoku rules apply. Every single one is going to, this is going to be true. These yellows are going to equal these blues. And of course, you know, it works the other way too. You can flip it around and say, these are the yellows instead. And let's see, these can be the yellows. And then these would be the blues over here instead of these, and it's still going to be true. Those blues are going to equal those yellows every time. So um, that can be super helpful. You know, if you get, uh, let's see, we did some with arrows. What if you had killers? What if you had some killer cages in here and you knew this was, I don't know, 20, and this one was 20, and this was 15, and then, you know, maybe you had some of the cages over here. Let's do 15, and we'll just do 15 and 20, and... 20, why not? So now you know <clears throat> that these three have to be the same sum as these four. Because the total of the blue has to equal the total of the yellow. So there's lots of things you can do with that. That's the basics of set or set equivalence theory. Hopefully that um, helps explain it a little bit. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Um, it can be a little confusing to understand how set works sometimes. So Hopefully that was helpful. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.